no cursing, please. I, you know, and I uh, realize we have a little bit smaller group today, but we still have a few people joining us. And uh, hey, thank you everybody for joining us. Welcome back. Uh, boy, I, I'm I'm glad you're not outside. I was outside just a little bit ago, and it was really miserable. So, hey, we're glad you're here. Uh, are we ready, Raj? We are on the record. Okay. Uh, well, hey, good evening again, and welcome back after your break. Hope your break was uh, enjoyable, and you're kind of heading toward the the stretch now, I guess. Wow, it's been a quick year. Uh, this is the Sunday night webinar, and I'm Gene Colbago. And I am still Roger Carroll. And I wonder how that's going to show up on closed caption from YouTube. <laughs> Uh, we've been through that. It's it's kind of interesting. Anyhow, uh, this is uh, April 15th. You see the number there. We're glad you're here. Hey, and before we leave uh, the PowerPoint tonight, uh, Raj, uh, something that's close to your heart, I, I put on a slide, the next slide, I hope, uh, the next slide. There it is. Yes, 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 yes. This is, boy, I, I have to admit, this is National Poetry Month, and I uh, happen to find a little poem from Shel Silverstein, Shel Silversteinstein, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, who was quite a, an interesting character, wrote some wonderful poems for children, Where the Sidewalk Ends, Light in the Attic, and some others. And uh, also some pretty good songs uh, he wrote. Uh, the unicorn you're not, you're not going to sing, are you? No, 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 no. I promise not okay, to sing. Okay, because I'm, I'm hovering over that mute button. Well, I, yeah. Okay, <laughs> he, all right. He wrote, a, he wrote a boy named Sue, as a matter of fact. <laughs> the Johnny Cash. And I couldn't do that. But anyhow, I was uh, looking at for the uh, official poster, and I found that. And that's it there. And I was... Uh, not really impressed with that, I have to admit, Raj. What do you think? That is the official poster. Uh, okay. So anyhow, but anyhow, well, April uh, is the cruelest month. Yeah, well, that's the cruelest poster. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's the green and everything's growing. Well, but anyhow, uh, I did put some uh, sites there, uh, not just here, but on my Flipboard too. That you know, some some really good things. You know, we know that. Uh, you know, you have a, uh, you know, those of you who do writing and so forth have, uh, you know, a, a curriculum to follow. But there's some really good ideas that you might be able to slip in and, you know, use some poetry this month. And actually, uh, it kind of leads me to my next slide. One more slide. There it is. And if you happen to have a QR reader on your phone, you can grab your phone real quickly and zap that. And it will take you to a uh, a sla a, 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 a yeah a site. Uh, let's see if we can get here. Okay, it's supposed to take me to this site here. Uh, I don't know if it's doing it, but anyhow. So anyhow, it'll take you to a site, and it's also reminds me of something that uh I don't know. Tonight is going to be uh a very unorganized night. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, you know, as Raj and I collect information and sites and articles and things, uh, you know, there's so many great articles that I thought tonight, rather than talk a lot about some of the other things, you know, it's not just going to have a night where I talk about uh, some of the things that uh, some of the things that we've run, I've run into for the past couple of weeks. And let's see. And well, here's our. Uh, let's see where we are. Here's my website, and of course you can go here to get that. And here's I, I you know I have my normal Flipboard for March and April, which you can get to from my website. And uh, there are a whole bunch of new ideas I put in here. Here are the 25 sites for Poetry Month. Uh, you know they're actually this one is aimed, uh, let's see if we can just get there. Yeah, this one is aimed somewhat at the lower grades. Some really good ideas. Uh, some of them are for writing poems, some of them for reading poems. Uh, the magnetic uh, poetry, 
Three is always fun, you know, where they can drag and drop words to create uh, poems on a campus. Uh, there's some really good ones here. I, of course, haven't had a chance to go through all of them, but some really nice ones. And uh, here where you can write and decorate so people can work with. And some of these are uh, for iPads and things like that. So uh, if you have an iPad, you know, you can throw it on your, I think you can throw them on your smart boards now, can't you, Raj? The if iPads? You had, no. Your, well, your personal one, can you project them on? Not smart board? Smart. No. You still can't do that? No. You need Why a not? TV. I thought you could. Well, well, with that little. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, okay. But, but anyhow, there are I'm, some smart board activities at yeah. the uh, Smart Exchange that, that I was going to mention. The magnetic yeah, go ahead. poetry activity, which is yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I was going to mention that, but yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, they, it, it, by all means, do that. And, uh, you know, there, there's another one here that uh, this is from the poets.org. This is the, uh, the one that the uh, QR would have taken you to. And these are more uh, oriented toward uh, uh, the uh, little bit higher grades. And, yeah, some things that you can do, you know. Uh, if you're interested, you could sign up for the poem a day. And uh, each day you will receive in your email a poem. And some of them are, I, I did this last year, and there were some very good, very nice poems there. Some of them, actually, I kept a couple of them. Uh, there is Teach This Poem, a weekly series for teachers, too. So there's a, you know, there is a lot that can be done. And it's goes along with the idea of creativity. We uh, keep saying one of the big things is we need our students to be creative, and it would uh, kind of get those creative juices going a little bit. So we hope you take a look at this. And by the way, uh, you know, on that uh, PowerPoint show, you saw the QR, that little uh, item that you can click on or uh, hone in on with the QR reader, or if you have, uh, I don't know if all the Apple phones now, the uh, uh, camera automatically will do that, but mine does. Anyhow, uh, we talked about this before, but this was a kind of a, a new one that I ran into, uh, Raj, and it's kind of, it's very simple. There it is right there, and uh, all you do is scan it in uh, and you can get it uh, uh, on uh, your, uh, excuse me, you can get it uh, any way you want. You can just fill in the information and uh, it will take you, uh, create a nice QR for you that you can then copy. You can, you know, save whatever and put on uh, either a uh, you know one of your smart notebook uh, files, or if you want to, if you are do, uh, putting it on your website, and Raj is going to talk about the new website in just a little bit. But anyhow, that's one of the things too. As I said before, we're just going to be roaming around a little bit today with my stuff. I put a whole oh boy, I think about three or four uh, lines of different articles here that you might be interested in um, and really uh, there's some decent ones there one of the ones I was kind of interested in and I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work I don't know if you saw this one Raj I saw an article it is a new type of search engine that Google is playing with using Experimental AI language, you know, artificial intel AI language, artificial intelligence, and it's called Talk to Books. <laughs> okay, and it's kind of an interesting thing, and you can learn more by clicking on here and reading about it. And it talks about what artificial language is, and what they're trying to do is you uh, ask a question say something, and then it searches through, oh, I forgot it was, maybe 100,000 different books, 
to kind of continue the conversation. What w it tries to sense what you're saying and then continues the conversation. Uh, for example, uh, let's put it in, it says, say something. How can I find the best job, oops, for me? Or, or huh, job, or maybe I want career. I'm going to change that if you don't mind. Okay, I'm just gonna ask it a question. And then you hit go. And what it does is it goes through and finds passages from books that seem to continue the dialogue. Okay, uh, and some of them uh, make a lot of sense. And you might become interested in a book, check out the book, you know, see if it's available. And uh, what kinds of career, you know, seem to fit your, per discover the importance of choosing a career that matches, okay. And again, you can click on here and you can go on and on. It'll keep bringing back uh, various responses from these books. And I just thought it was kind of a cool, cool thing. It's called Talk to Books. And it's, uh, I, I put the uh, link on my uh, flipboard, but it's books dot google dot com talk to books and you can play with it and they have some sample questions here and you can again type in your own that was pretty cool pretty cool I thought just a you know, something I noticed of interest hey uh next thing uh dealing a little bit tonight with like research kids looking up information. Many times when students are going for information, they run into things like this. This I've taken is just uh, some information I copied and pasted from a website dealing with George Washington, okay? If a student was looking for some information dealing with George Washington, his final days or something, do you think he or she would read through all of this to find out what was the important stuff? Well, here's a little site that might help out, okay? Here's what I did. I uh, just simply going to highlight all of this stuff. I'm going to copy it. And there's a site, again, right here. Let's see if I can get to it by clicking here. There we go. That's called Summarize This. I think maybe we've talked about it before, but it's, it seems to have been updated. And you just paste that, all of that information in it. See all of this? It's an awful lot. And then you just hit Summarize, and it brings you back a very short, much shorter, Summary. It seems to go through, and I, you know, I've, I've checked it out. It seems to go through and picks out some of the more important points of the article. And it might be very useful when students are doing some research or, uh, you know, just uh, to help them learn to summarize. It's just a simple little site called summarize this and you can see how easily uh, it can be used just do that pretty simple so what's and, the skill copy and paste or summarize <laughs> well i mean there if in the research it would help bring the you know like maybe if you had an article have them summarize it and compare it to this yeah compare it to this yes yeah. that's what you know or if they're doing research, sometimes, again, the, as I was saying before, if, if there's a rather large article, uh, you know, sometimes that does turn off students. You know, they rather than re looking through and finding the important stuff and so forth, this might help them to at least, you know, minimize, uh, you know, take out some of the stuff that may not be quite as important and bring in some of the more important facts. So it might be uh, useful for that. Could, could take this summary and the highlighter and go back into the major article and yes. uh, highlight the uh, yeah. where mm -hmm. it's taken directly. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you, 
a very vital skill is learning to summarize. To summarize, that's exactly, yes, exactly. You can use it in a lot of different ways. But, I, you know, I thought, geez, you know, this might be useful in that. So I thought yeah, that, that it seemed to be uh, something that looked pretty good. And again, you know, uh, while I was on the uh, research bit, uh, it reminded me that some years ago or a year or two ago, when I went to the library or when we went to the library and you picked out a school, almost any school, let's pick out Niagara Falls High School, for example, there was often a list of databases that you could go to. And they seem to have, uh, they don't seem to be here anymore, although you'll see like underneath some of the elementary schools, see the online databases and reference sources, you know, it gives you some passwords and so forth for World Book Online and teaching books. Uh, this is aimed probably more at the upper grades, but uh, again, when we are trying to teach our students you know, to do research, proper research, that mean doesn't mean that you uh, go to uh, DuckDuckGo or Google or something like that and do a search. But there are some very valid databases, and, one, and some of them are available on our local library. I think we've talked about this a couple of years ago. It might be a good idea here. But if you have a library card, you have access to a huge, huge number of resources that you could use and uh, might even encourage students to get a library card to do this. Uh, if you go, this is the Nioga main page, and you'll see up in the top left here it says online databases, and just to zip very quickly, you'll see there is quite a selection of them here. They're in alphabetical order, but the one at the top, Ap Academic One File, and it does have a tutorial uh, that you can go through to use it, but it's not that difficult. And it's one that uh, I used when I was uh, uh, working out at NCCC and Buff State and uh, recommended highly to the students. And, uh, you know, it, it can be used in high school. And uh, it's a very uh, scholarly source. Uh, I don't mean it's just bringing scholarly articles back, but it's a good reference source. And uh, when in this uh, age of uh, the fake news and things like that, this is uh, much, much more secure. And you can uh, be sure that the uh, students are bringing back better uh, information. As we go down, you can see the Britannica Academic Edition, things like that. Just going through real quick, you know, and maybe, uh, you know, if you get a chance, take a look. Uh, they have them uh, oriented toward various subject areas, too. You have business insights. We have computer database. We have a criminal justice, culinary arts collection, diversity skills, you know, educators reference complete. That might be something that you know we could all use. I uh, I have to admit, I am not uh, you know I haven't gone into it a great deal. Uh, remember the old Eric database, Raj? Oh yeah. <laughs> it mentions yeah. that. Yeah, and again, endangered species. The information might be good for students. I don't know uh, again what level the uh, writing is. Whether it would be available for uh, for younger students. But just going through, again, we have the fine, you know, fine arts, we have gender studies, we have uh, gardening. General One File is a very good one also. Again, fairly uh, wide-ranging, good news, good periodical information. General, you know, again, science, if you're into science, they have that. Um, the Green File deals with the environmental topics. Health reference, see, historical, hysterical, um, I'm sorry, historical periodicals. And I mean, you can just see that there's so much here, and uh, we're just getting into. 
Um, and again, this one, Kid Info Bits, contains age-appropriate magazines. If I could just click it very quickly, okay, use, and it takes you to a place called Novel New York. And this, you can go in here if, and select magazines. And it's, it's amazing dealing with various topics uh, for your students. It, 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 this one, uh, very highly recommend. Let's see if I'm here, okay, I know, okay. Again, just going through, again, if you need newspaper articles, here are New York State newspapers. And here's another New York State newspapers. Uh, for those people in literature, there's a novel list, <laughs> K to eight plus. I thought that would be. And it deals, a d design that says, especially for elementary and middle schools, okay? Find, uh, you know, d books, uh, information dealing with books for, for that good. One of the ones that I found the most use for uh, in college and you might, uh, in high school, because quite often uh, we are teaching the types of writing, you know, uh, where persuasive writing, opinion writing, things like that, to to take a to take a stand, back it up with facts and so forth. The opposing viewpoints is amazing. It contains information dealing with almost any uh, topic that is uh, you know has some controversial topic that is in the news today and you know they do have uh, some basic ideas down here but you can again type in just about anything up here uh, let's see fracking okay and and it brings back a number of articles and it brings back both sides Notice, fracking is not a public health risk. And I think this one would take the opposite. Chemicals are involved. See, you can see both sides. So this uh, particular database would give you a chance to look at this. Oh, there was a, a where, where, uh, the kids might like the pop culture collection too. There's uh, some information dealing with our pop culture and so forth and so on. But again, popular magazines. Uh, access to articles uh, in in the various magazines, but again, just going through amazing world history, world book. You know, it's it's amazing. So don't forget that you know that our local library, the uh, you know the Niagara Library System, really has that. I, uh, and uh, again, talking about research and summarization, maybe you could go in use some of those articles and even do your summarization and then use the summarization uh, site that we just talked about. So, and with that, Raj, I, I could, uh, you know, I, I have like a whole bunch of stuff and I do recommend, you know, if you have a chance, go through. There's a whole bunch of good stuff uh, that I found and put in here. And hopefully, uh, you know, get take a quick look at it. If we get a chance, we'll get back to a few more. But I think uh, I should let you talk for a little while. Okay, now, where is where can we find your your flipboard? With all okay, this? if you go to, uh, well, you can go to uh, any school, the, any school, or you can even go to the page that you signed up, you know, you registered for this webinar. And uh, I think we have links right there, too. And if you go to my page, which is being updated and uh, uh, revised. Uh, Raj will talk a little more about that in a minute. Uh, you can just click on the uh, webinars for 2018, and this is uh, the one one for uh, this week, uh, this month. With, with all these references that you just yeah. About, yeah yeah that have all of these yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, you know one of those flip boards in there. We put them up there because I think they're a little. They look a, a little nicer that way. It's a nice presentation. And with that, Raj, thank you for putting up with me for so long. I'll, I'm gonna make Jeez, you the floor. finally. Yeah. That, <laughs> oh my God. You took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, <I suppose. laughs>
Okay. Uh, Gene uh, referenced a couple things that, uh, some of which you probably already know, but because of the, the rush of being back in the classroom this week, may not have attended to or taken a look at. Um, prior to the spring break, uh, a, a couple of things happened. One is what you're looking at right now is the new upgraded version of the school district's website. And the uh, if you did have a school classroom web page, this affected everybody. Everything was upgraded, changed over, switched over um, with a number of new features. Everything that you had is still there, but perhaps not in the same place where you're looking at it uh, previously. One of the things uh, are driving this <clears throat> is a, a compatibility uh, issue that was uh, that existed for different devices, if, depending if you had a tablet, an iPad, a phone, an Android, uh, uh, a Macintosh, or whatever. When you viewed the district website, you got a slightly different version of it. In fact, what you're looking at now, this is a school district issued laptop. If you recall previously, and I probably should have uh, taken a, an image of it somewhere, I may have one, where the screen did not go full width from side to side of your display. There was a, an area over here and another dead area over here, and everything was squeezed in between. So this website now automatically maximizes uh, its display features on whatever device you come to it from. So that, that's one thing. So that, that's a nice thing. Also, you'll notice uh, some of the graphics are different. This, this is, uh, we had a rotating group of images. Um, we st that, that still exists, but all of it's being handled a little differently. There's a little engine behind it. We, for the longest time, called it school wires. Then it was, or prior to that, it was webs that work. Now it's being um, run by something called, uh, go to the bottom of the page, called Blackboard down here. It's been a migration. Blackboard is a very popular um, internet tool, mm. or probably a product that you'll see all over the place. It's also something that's uh, part of something that you'll see the term, the acronym LMS uh, for a learning management system. A lot of uh, institutions use that to manage instruction. Um, you're going to see uh, much more of this in the, in the coming months and uh, as it uh, continues to evolve. But if you and I, <laughs> if we say school wires or webs at work or I think another one was maybe, I don't know, centricity or something. Uh, we're talking about the same thing. We're, we're really here using this engine. And there a whole lot of behind the scenes work took place to get us this far. Right before the break, uh, the school district's officer, person in charge of uh, community relations, and the person who is actually the webmaster, the person who, um, whose job responsibility is maintaining the, maintain the website, sent out uh, some information that uh, kind of reeled back on the permissions of everybody who had a piece of the web to, to manage, either the individual schools or in perhaps in your case, um, your classroom web page, you lost access to it. Down here, if you recall, you had to sign in up at the top right-hand corner of the web page. That sign in now is at the bottom. It still gets you there. However, uh, because of this change, one being the access, uh, what's also behind all this is something, it's a federal requirement. It's the ADA, American for Disabilities Act, American Disabilities Act, which requires all public institutions to be compliant with accessibility uh, needs of 
any clientele, any person who goes to look at the public information. In other words, if someone who uh, has uh, an issue with sight, they would have a screen reader. And a screen reader would be uh, voicing what they're doing with, say, wherever the cursor would point to, it would be reading it out to them. And to make that happen, to make that kind of uh, compatible across the board. There are certain guidelines and standards, all of which public institutions, school districts, cities, towns, counties, whatever, <laughs> have to be in compliance with. And there's a lot of little pieces to this. One has to do with the, 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 font, the basic font, the color of the font, what you can do with images, and, uh, and a number of other things too. Uh, Judy Glasser is our uh, community relations director. At some point, uh, I reached out to her this week to see if she would come on uh, and join us on a Sunday night webinar to tell us more about these particulars, of which you know she knows far more about it than uh, Jean and I know. We know that we have to comply. Everyone who manages it and works with it has to comply as well. And then some of the different navigation things. Uh, uh, there are a couple of other additional features here. The parent portal used to be up at the top. Um, accessing your email, some of these things uh, are in a different location. Uh, aesthetically, I don't know. Um, if you look at almost every, well, I can't find an exception anywhere, school district in western New York that's part of the Erie One or not, uh, Orleans, Niagara, BOCES, use the Blackboard for their uh, district community, you know, district websites. They are all either have already made this switch or will be in the process of doing it because there, it is a, there is a deadline for uh, compliance with all these features. If you go to your school, either here, navigate here, or select a school up here, there were previously ways you know, the same way, uh, it, it, the information's all here. We go to 79th Street School. Some of the images are still the same, they're just presented differently. Maybe the, the banner up here might be a school color and so on. List of teacher web pages. Uh, we, we did some work on that. That's gonna be, I think, uh, maybe handled in a little different manner as well coming up. But if you have a just a web page that you have been maintaining and updating and so on, you will have to, uh, I don't know what quite to call it, Jean, but uh, Judy Glasser, uh, she had a meeting on the 26th of March for the school, basically it was for school uh, personnel who didn't get to go on break, like uh, school secretaries and so on, and some teachers uh, were invited to, uh, to meet with Judy so that they could then be granted uh, their permissions back to go in and edit the page following the guidelines that she will explain uh, and so on if you're part of that group as well. But at 79th Street, they're, they're, this is gonna be handled a little differently. Um, if you recall on the district homepage, there's a staff directory. Each school now is handled a little differently and I don't know if it's worked its way through the entire district, all of our, our uh, elementary, secondary schools, and so on. But if you click on that staff directory there, and you go here, uh, I think all we have to do is, I think, yes, this has not worked its way across all the schools yet. But if you press that, um, well, I have to go back one. It was limiting itself. They're gonna try to design it so that you only see, if you're on 79th Street and you're looking at the staff directory here, that you will only see 79th Street. So let's put in um, a location, starts with, well, I'm gonna start it with, uh, a seven. Uh, it contains over here a 79. So then we'll submit this. And so you quickly get all of the teachers in 79th Street. And then there was another thing that I noticed on some of the schools that gave you a, gave a little bit more information. This is two pages because there are 
uh, the displays so many. But what it did was it provided the grade level or the subject area of the person. So that's something that's still a work in progress. Um, rather than now, you're going to run into this depending on where you try to access this information. This is, uh, well, if you are a user, you might be able to log in here. Uh, I'm not sure that's the case, uh, depending on uh, levels of permission and so on. But uh, you'll notice uh, some different navigation features and so on. But uh, the change has occurred. We switched over. There's also a school district uh, app for a smartphone, whether it's on the uh, iOS or an Android, full of uh, quickly accessible features and information about the district and so on. Um, Judy will explain all of this. Uh, I haven't received uh, a response about when she might be meeting with teachers. Uh, the requirement is you get presented the information, the guidelines, the do's and the don'ts and so on. Um, that has to do with graphics. It has to do with uh, particular font. If you hover over a an image, that image must uh, tell you what it is. Now this this quite honestly doesn't isn't a very good description. School Niagara Falls City School District. What it should say is uh, image of an open book that is the you know give be a little bit more descriptive there. Um, there are some other things like uh, Gene and I have been putting up our and teasing ourselves about um, what has to happen if you put a video up for your class and so on. Uh, come on, you can get there. Where? Let's go to the home page. Here's the district here. If we go to Technology Res Resource Center and we look over here, the webinar recordings, uh, again, we have been, since September, recording our Sunday night uh, webinars and putting them up on this page here. And uh, we, we did it by date and month. For example, like last month, recordings all the way back into September. One of the new requirements is that these videos have to be closed captioned. Well, it turned out to be a lot easier than I, at least <laughs> my, my first nightmare was, you mean I've got to transcribe everything that was said into some routine and so on? Well, you can do that if you want. But what we discovered that is uh, YouTube, once we, we, it's a couple of additional steps for us, but once we record the webinar, it has to be converted. And then either Gene or I, we upload it to YouTube. And YouTube then takes, it does a decent job, but not a, a perfect job, takes the, uh, the recording, the audio recording, and transcribes it into um, just text that appears across the bottom as, as you uh, replay the recording of the video. Uh, so and what, it, what we found was uh, interesting enough. Um, I'm just going to play this one here. You'll see what we're talking about very quickly. You won't hear it, but you'll start to see the closed caption down here. And I click on it. And then you can't hear that, but here is the text. But what we have to do, we cleaned up, uh, if that's the word for it, uh, some of the spelling. It was phonetic. Uh, Gene was Jean-Claude Bagel. Mm -hmm. um, and I was... I kind of like that. Well, you're, you're going to be that forever now, in my mind, <laughs> Jean-Claude. <laughs> uh, and I was... Well, Gene says Raj. Well, I am from Pakistan or India. I'm Raj, yes, R-A-J. <laughs> Uh, some of the things, uh, Mr. Corella, uh, superintendent, uh, any names, anything uh, of that nature, we went in and cleaned up. But we did not, and I, not unless I am commanded to do so, not going to go in and provide the punctuation, uh, et cetera, for this. You get the idea, especially 
uh, after a while, you kind of ignore the closed captioning and just listen to the um, the recording itself. The other thing that we did do, just as a slight aside, um, we put in some links, uh, went go through the recording. These are the main topics. I'll list the topics and where it's appropriate. Um, put a link to that site. So if you are busy taking notes, really, you're taking notes, um, I could wait until we post the video and then there'll be a quick list of topics here uh, that you could go uh, hyperlink to and so on and, and catch up with the, some of the things there that you might be interested in following up. And I notice I have the wrong year in here, so I'm gonna go back and fix that. <laughs> I've got it over here, but I must have copied and pasted something. Anyway, that'll, well, here we are, it's both here. And I did, got it right here, but not the title page. So we'll we'll fix that up and so on. Okay, that was one message that went out prior to the break. The follow-up is if you want to get back involved and uh, manage the content of your web page, uh, you have to be cleared to do so uh, before your um, activation code is uh, reinstated to go in and clean it up. But we would, Gene and I will certainly help you with that once that takes place. And I'm waiting to hear from Judy uh, if there's gonna be another meeting or how she wants to roll that out. It may be something I, uh, we, we suggested when we uh, met with Judy that we could do this uh, maybe an after school webinar. She could put out the information, go over everything, and maybe, oh, like the right to know PowerPoint or something, maybe a, a way to sign off on that, that you agree that you've received the information and so on. So there's a, a number of things most recently, there is was a, a, a message from uh, Ray Granary, the uh, uh, administrator in charge of uh, the IS Department of Technical the Technology and so on. He put out a, um, a an email informing us, and then Gene and I have known about it. In fact, we've mentioned it. Uh, but now the deadline is May 1st, is that if you use the features of Office Mix, this tab and all of these tools are going away, are no longer going to be supported. I don't know if an upgrade will wipe these out of existence or if you have it, but if you have an Office Mix, that very quickly is if you created a PowerPoint slide and within that slide you built in an interactive, uh, maybe a quiz or uh, did some screen recording and did some uh, other things, that's no longer going to be supported in the Office Mix. What you have to do is publish it and it will be migrated to, let me see if I have it running, yeah my uh, Office 365, actually I do have it up here. It's going to be put into an app called Stream, which is a video channel where all of these can be migrated. Uh, we got a question here, Gene, I don't know if we... Oh, I'm uh, watching you and I missed oh, the question. Uh, it, it's, um, I think we, we don't know yet, Maria. Uh, if you want to look at that, Gene, we'll get back to that. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. And again, all the PowerPoints have to be migrated uh, so I, I had, uh, if you created an office mix and if you follow the procedure, you're going to yeah. see that, uh, any office mix accounts that you have, uh, mixes that you have, uh, let's see, is it moving there? I did sign in. I should be looking at it right now. I'm not. Here is a uh, fact in the email that Ray sent out, our specific directions on how to migrate any Office Mix recordings that you created so that you don't lose them. And it migrates them to um, a, a, a video that would then show up in Stream. I'm gonna go back to, if I go into my Stream account, it, it should, it will, it did this afternoon, list, here I go into my content, uh, my videos, and these down here are office mixes 
that I converted so that I can now view them. I don't lose them. They're in Office Stream, uh, which is part of your Office 365 account. We don't know, uh, Gene, unless you got information in the last couple hours, <laughs> how many no. teachers have used Office Mix or were using Office Mix and are concerned that the time and effort that they put into creating the mixes, uh, they might lose them. The, the idea behind the Office Mix is going to live on in other forms. And speaking of forms, not being making a, a pun out of it, um, Microsoft Forms is one way to get uh, interactive quizzes and interactive uh, content uh, mm -hmm. embedded into a PowerPoint and so on. So uh, the screen recording, in fact, I'll go back to um, my, the PowerPoint. There's going to be a new tab somewhere in here that says recording, and it's going to include some of these uh, mm -hmm. functions right here, only it's going to be a new tab. The problem right now is, or the issue right now is, the version of PowerPoint that you have on your school district issued laptop and even subsequently perhaps downloaded uh, onto another device, you may not have that recording tab yet because there's a some kind of background work that has to take place mm -hmm. for us to get the latest versions of any of the Office products. This dictation we talked about previously, we, you were able to do that on your own. And it has to do with, I'm not gonna get real technical, but it has to do with working within the options tab here. When that comes to be, Gene and I, and uh, maybe a workshop and so on, that information will be put out that it now does exist and you can take advantage of it. And as Gene's been pointing out all along, um, and from time to time, you know, both of us, they're adding new features and new functions to the different products from Microsoft all along. You can go and look at what updates occurred last month, what updates occurred in October or November, increasing some of the neat, really neat things that you can do in Excel, in Word. One of the favorites that we've been mentioning almost the entire school year is in the Microsoft Office product OneNote using the learning tools and the immersive reader which is now migrating and find you find that there are options to use the immersive reader in Microsoft Word it's even in Excel or uh, and in PowerPoint but until we get the latest versions of these programs um, downloaded for us, like over here in view, um, it's not here yet. If I was on my uh, personal device, it would be there because that updates outside of that environment. So there are a lot of really cool things coming and um, you know, we're gonna bring them to you. And you know, slowly now, as we work our way towards the end of the school year, we're gonna be looking about uh, for calendar at the calendar this summer and see what kinds of initiatives the district's going to launch and want us to support. There's a there's a lot of stuff coming, um, and getting more and more people using Office 365, but in particular OneNote itself and using those tools um, is is a pretty strong initiative. And those of you who are dabbling in it right now, we want to support that and expand that use uh, in the you know, in the coming school year. So that's, without getting into too many more technical things, Gene, I don't know if you saw, there's a new product from Adobe called Adobe Spark, which is a uh, video creation. Adobe, yes, yes. It's a video creating tool. Well, oh, yeah. we talked about what's available in within Microsoft, which is this thing here. You can create videos. Yes, you were here. voter. Mm -hmm. um, the old, you know, uh, Microsoft Movie Maker. Well, now mm -hmm. it's been broken up and you can do that. Adobe Spark is another, but it, it's outside Microsoft. It's a free tool that lets you mess around with video and mm -hmm. uh, storybook and all those kinds of, this is the time of the year when a lot of classrooms, uh, kindergarten, uh, kids graduating from one grade level to the next like to do year-end 
video projects. And the, the main staple of what for a number of years has been PowerPoint. Well, with all these new features in PowerPoint, it just becomes you know much more powerful. Uh, we're hoping that these things get taken care of and we can assist you if that's what you, you want to do. Uh, so we're wrapping up right now. I know we're in the old you know assessments for this, the uh, ELA, and then coming up math and so on. But there are some year-end things that are that kids, the classrooms traditionally like to do to you know bring uh, closure to the school year and maybe kids can make a portfolio and then a PowerPoint of the kinds of things that they've done through the year and so on. So we have the tools. We got to start using them. And mm -hmm. um, PowerPoint's one, Office 365, this streaming tool and so on are all potentially very powerful and can empower students to do a lot of neat, creative things. Um, and we want to help you do that. So. Um, I'm going to throw it back in your direction, Gene. You can show us okay. some more of your, uh, yeah, your Well, stuff. I was going to, so, well, um, piggybacking on what you have, okay. uh, go ahead and then I'll show you maybe to. I'll piggyback you. There you go. Further, uh, okay. Well, you know, you had mentioned, I'm just going to show you my PowerPoint. Uh, as I said before, uh, I have my own account that I pay for each year. Uh, this started well before the school district uh, got Office 365, and I've just been using it. But uh, Raj, uh, notice, uh, oh, well, I can also show you, just to show you one thing that I can do. Raj and I keep telling people about updating, and that with the school Office 365, that's we, you, an you issue. Don't have, we don't have those choices. Yeah, but see, but with mine, yeah, with mine, there is a thing called Office Insider, and I have signed up, and I get the new builds all, uh, once a week almost. There is a new update. And is, Raj, do you see, can you see the top here? It says recording. This is what's coming. That's what I we're think, talking about, right. Yeah, that I think the mix is going to go away. Mm -hmm. And here is the record. Yeah, and it's very similar to what was on Mix. Yes. Just simplified, and it's basically the same. It will be there. So, yeah, they, uh, you know, the only thing is we have to uh, make sure that uh, we get the. Okay, go into view. I, it's view. very small, but yeah. I think I can see it. Is the immersive okay. reader there? Uh, our learning not, tools, no. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Oh, I think, hold a second. Where are learning tools? Uh, they, no, it's not there. Uh, where was it? Was it? Yeah, I think it was in review. Uh, no, yeah, it used to be, uh, it would be right in here, I think, in here. Oh, it was in the view on the other. Yeah, uh, reading, maybe in reading view. No, that's just writing uh, the no, screen. No, 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 and show, hang in show. Uh, but anyway, it, yeah, it, it, yeah. I'm surprised I don't not I don't see it there. Yeah, uh, I believe it is coming. But again, it is very interesting what might be coming down the line. I was talking to Raj earlier today, and again, I updated these. Uh, you know, I have to make sure the updates are there. And strangely enough, in one of these now. Uh, in the review, I think, oh, okay. Now, if that's interesting. Re references, I apologize. Uh, I just noticed something that had been added in. Again, uh, an update that I had done. Over here, it's a copy link scan. <laughs> and I don't know, you know I, I looked it up, Raj, and it said it would be put in any Office 365. So this might be coming out. And what it is, it allows you to create, you have to go in and create your uh, account. And it will actually, if you have a, a document, say, from a student on in Word, it will go through and you can check it for plagiarism. It's a plagiarism checker. The only thing is, this is a... Uh, 
one that will only allow you to do 10 a month unless you buy an account. So it's kind of interesting. But anyhow, that's that's another thing that's coming down the line. Uh, real quickly, I was just telling Rod, there were a couple of weird little things coming down. Uh, I know most, well, most of you don't use Excel, but there are some very new things coming down in Excel that uh, you can use with data. For example, uh, this is just brand new. It just came out this week, and it was kind of weird, so I had to check it out. Uh, if you have some stocks, Apple happens to be a stock, okay? You can click on that, and up on top now, you can click Stock, okay? Over here, it will help you to select the right one. I want NASDAQ, Apple. Okay, there's Apple. Now, it says Apple Inc., and, and when I click on this, it will give me the current <laughs> pricing of, you know, the, the, t the ticker pricing of stock and a whole bunch of information about stock. And you can do that with, let's see if I can just do it real quick. This is coming down the line. Uh, it should be coming, and it might be. I don't know if it'll be useful to, for kids or not, uh, you know, if you, or you. You can click on Niagara Falls. And I'm just going to click on geography. Okay, notice how it's the data. Okay, I want the, that one right there. Okay, oh, I picked Canada by mistake. I apologize. But then when I click on this, it gives me some information about the particular item. These are just things that are being added in just well, to show is you. That, how similar is that to that feature in um, PowerPoint? Oh, you're talking about, oh, I'm trying to think of what the, you were talking um, about. researcher, I think. Oh, you mean if you, if I clicked on this word and then did no, a smart look? With, within PowerPoint, when uh, you go to start a new one. Um, oh, you're talking about the research. Yes, yes, exactly. yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, you want to file a new, you were talking about the uh, start, quick starter. Quick starter. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Of, yeah. All that does is, uh, well, this one is just, it's just, uh, believe it or not, they, uh, for some reason, uh, Microsoft does use Wikipedia a great deal because this information is from Wikipedia. Uh, let's see if I can click. See, if you look down below, notice it says Wikipedia. Uh, this is just a very brief outline of it and, you know, just a little bit of information about it. And then, of course, there's a link. Here, if you wish to go more, but it's just something that they're adding in. Uh, you know, as Raj said, we need to keep up on these, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll be getting the updates so that we can use these. Because uh, this, uh, you know, Office 365 is becoming more and more useful, more and more uh, ah, easy to use. I mean, if, for example, I mean, if you had George Washington and highlighted him and uh, did a smart lookup, for example, uh, over on the right, there's some more information about George Washington. You can do it right within your your document now. You can start uh, doing uh, research for student to uh, students to uh, do. So again, it's making it much easier. Uh, and that's why we need to become you know, more and more familiar with the product. And with that, Raj, I think we're just about at the end of the uh, of the hour. I uh, want to remind everybody that uh, there is a uh, survey coming in a thank you note. And uh, we hope that uh, you will open up the thank you note, click on the survey, and just... Let us know what you think, and if you have any suggestions, please pass them along to us, yeah. and we'll be very glad. Please, please do. We, you know, we're looking <laughs> at the end of the the, the school yeah. year coming really quickly, yeah. and uh, yeah. things you might want to take a second shot at, uh, have us address, and uh, sure. some and if you, topics, yeah. uh, please yeah. do if, pass them on. And if you are doing anything of you know, in your classrooms with technology and need any assistance, please yeah. let us know. Or if you've done something you're really proud of. Uh, yes, we'd love to hear it. We'll open your mic and you can share it with us. Sure, yeah, yeah. Show, and, show and tell night. 
would be glad to shut up. <laughs> that may get a whole bunch of good stuff. Yeah. Uh, my, yeah. my inbox just filled up. Yeah. Okay. Oh, by the way, yeah, one I forgot to talk about. If you do go to my thing, notice that Google, you know, has a great news is, well, I don't know if it's how new, but is they're building a safety center and it has some really terrific stuff in here uh, for families, for teachers, for everyone staying safe online. I learned a couple of interesting things today that I didn't know about. So you might well, want to take a, a large concern that. of that and yeah, all yeah. over the place. Yeah, uh, might want to days. talk a little bit yeah. about that next week. I mean, things that you can pass on and use in your own homes regarding safety. Hey, and with that, thank you very much. Uh, hope to see you next Sunday uh, again. Uh, stay, stay safe. Stay, stay dry. Stay dry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and thanks again. And have a good evening, yes. everybody. Yeah. Good night, everyone. I hope to see you next week.